Hey YouTubers, Electric Adventures here and here is my very first retro system overview and the subject today is my recently acquired Acorn A7000 system which is um, the very last model line that was released in the Acorn computer series. Um, it was released in uh, July 1995. Now there are several variations in the models and even uh, one that comes with uh, A7000 Plus that was pretty much the same model with everything expanded. Um, it is um, in a way a streamlined uh, unit so it has uh, as per the previous models as well the CPU, the video display unit and the I.O. Um, uh, chips all on the one chip and that chip is soldered to the motherboard so non-replaceable and upgradable it only has one RAM slot uh, which originally came with about four uh, meg of RAM uh, this one's been upgraded um, I think the maximum's 132 meg which I believe this one is has been expanded to so I don't know how the person found a memory chip that fitted and, and worked but they did um, does actually mean this machine takes a little bit longer to start up because it's checking the memory when it first starts up. Now the actual CPU is called an ARM 7500, thus the 7000 series. Um, and um, it only has one expansion bay which you can't use if you install the CD drive. Um, it does have another little expansion thing that you can do, you can actually add a network port to it. Alright, let's have a look at the back. Okay, here's the back of the unit in um, full view. Now, this unit has no side ports or switches or anything like that, so I'm not going to bother covering the sides. I have cleaned it up a little bit just to show that it does have a couple of little darker uh, scratch marks on it, which I will try and get out a bit more. Just need to buff them out. Now, starting on the left hand side of the unit, we have a obviously Australian power supply. Um, two, it's indicating two lines there, one at two amps, one at one amp, I'd say the one amp's the output for the monitor, so two amps in, driving two devices. We have the back port for the one expansion card you can put in, and then we have a, going from the left, a reset switch, an audio out socket, a normal standard VGA um, socket that had a sticker or a, a like sticky tape for it, they haven't got all the sticky tape off. And then this is the first model where they finally adopted as standard a PS2 keyboard and PS2 mouse. So you don't need any special components to go here. Here is where you can optionally add the network socket, and I obviously don't have that card. We have a parallel port and a serial port. And here's the serial number of my unit. Alright, I shall get this system plugged in and then we'll have a play with it. Here we go with the Acorn A7000 going through its initial boot phase. Now it takes a little longer to bring up its first little screen there because it's got the 66 meg RAM in there. I mean normally the maximum they come with would be 4. It is upgradable to um, 132 um, but finding a module for that would be very hard and um, you'd be hard pressed to use it on this sort of machine so it just takes a minute for the um, desktop to come up it's loading a couple of things from the hard drive uh, this machine was used at a school uh, it's got a lot of educational applications on it and it preloads a couple of things off the hard disk which is what it's doing at the moment the rest if I um, disconnected the hard disk and just booted it off its ROM um, it would um, it, it boots almost instantaneously and you have a number of applications built into the ROM so it won't be too much longer it's loading that impression style which is like a word processor right um, so we have our desktop it's in um, now um, RISC OS is very much based around the third mouse button, which in the case of this mouse is let's see if I can hold it up there, this little button on the side there. So this is just a PS2 mouse and that's the third button there. You do actually use it for quite a few things. I mean the normal if I um, you know use the left mouse button and double click on things, you get 
uh, it opens things up normally but if you want to do something other than that like if I press the third button there I get a, a um, little menu up so display large icons small icons full information here we go let's try that just out of interest there we go and you can resize windows so the principles of the GUI are very similar to other ones on this particular file you could actually draw a file if the application was running down here you could drag it and drop it on the application and it would open it um, or you can just double click on an application and it will open up that particular one so there we go there's a nice dragon that somebody's drawn at some stage um, so I'll just close that down now you have a um, uh, an application running here which actually allows you to change the screen resolution we're currently on 256 color mode 800 by 600 you can go up to 32,000 colors but that takes us down to a lower resolution just give it a second yeah, you may have to get the monitor to auto adjust there we go this monitor once it gets a resolution should save them so there we go we've, we're adjusted back so now if we maybe um, open the application again hang on we want probably want that let's go into this clip art here Go. Snowman probably doesn't use any more colors than we we're using before, so that does cut the resolution down quite a bit. But you've got to put it into the context of the other machines at the time. This is actually quite high resolution for them. Let's go back to 800 by 600, just a little bit more useful. Um, and so every time you run an application it stays running down here and so if we want a new paint file all we do is we left click on it and we get a new file all right and this is a um, like a drawing application um, and we can do like a closed set of points here right click to finish um, there we go, we can do all sorts of things with the menu. Now we've started a new one. Can't seem to do those. I mean, I don't know anything about this paint program, so it makes it a little difficult. I'm not sure how we change colours, that's all. This is the general menu select yeah, there are objects here, you can select objects style line color, there we go I think I did that too soon there we go so we can select like a green there we go, and we get a green line my left my center buttons double clicking I'd say hang on we might go here and select all no we probably didn't want that let's try that again maybe if we did it Ah, there we go, we've selected that one. Now if we go in here, style, fill colour. Let's try this blue, and there we go, we've filled it. So, yeah, I'm not that fantastic at art programs, but it actually, I mean, I reckon you could do quite a lot with this sort of an art program. Now it has the usual things, if I 
uh, go to delete, uh, close it, it'll ask him whether we need to save it. I'll just discard that. Now built into the ROM, uh, and I'll just go back to our icon display, are quite a few useful programs. So we have a um, video player, um, the drawing program we're playing with, there's a paint program for more arty type stuff, there's printer configuration, a scientific calculator, a music player, another editor which is like a text editor. They're the ones built in, but also on this uh, particular one, it has quite a nice word processor. I'm just trying to figure out how, where my toolbar has gone. Anyway, I can come here. Oh, there we go, as soon as I start typing. So we can put a word processor. As my terrible typing shows at the moment on this keyboard. Um, and, you know, you can do all the standard word processing type stuff. By the way, this is the only um, PS2 mouse I could find and it was incredibly dirty inside so I've only just cleaned it and it's still just a little bit jumpy. Um, so you know that that's a word processor so we could put together that'd be quite a capable word processor I think so not bad for something that's built into it I'm not sure whether this is a program you had to buy at the time or whether it came with it. Um, these are printer definitions here is the floppy drive um, or you don't have one in there at the moment, and here is CD drive, um, which isn't the, the is has a SCSI drive and it's not plugged in properly because the cable won't fit both the hard drive and the um, and the CD drive. I've got to get hunt around for another SCSI cable that'll do the trick. There are a few more demos on here, so let's have a look in here. I'm sure we've got there's a few games and things like that. Actually, we might go into the hard drive and go to demos. Let's try one of these uh, demonstrations. Okay, so this is. Okay, so we can take a lamp, compass, and a bag, and a watch. Now what do we do? An axe. Okay. And a rope. We came to another to drop oh I see, so you've got to choose where well we'd better take those two things, a compass and a lantern and a bag. And then can we click on the solve a word puzzle, okay. Yeah, and it's a teaching aid. All right, so we've got to find a word puzzle with these things in it. Quite a good little um, um, game. Um, dazzle demo. Let's have a look. Now, when you actually run an application, it goes down to the bar here. Oh, okay, so Dazzle's like a um, another paint program. Uh, fun and games. There's a Thilo, Shanghai. I notice the applications are stacking up down the bottom, they're all taking up memory. We can go, just by quickly clicking here, you can go and see how much memory's been taken up. So not very much compared to how much we've got in the machine. So, And you can get rid of one by using the metal mouse button. And there's the Mahjong. 
That'll be right, can't see a five. There we go, there's two. There we go, looks like all other mahjongs I've played. So once you get used to it, it's quite a good little um, operating system. And then it's playing video. Scattering there. Oops. Sorry, still having problems with the mouse. So, as you can see, it's quite a good thing. Now, another thing uh, that's actually quite good about Acorn systems is they always try to keep as much backward compatibility as possible. So, accessible through this menu and also by a um, keyboard shortcut. Okay, sorry about the short jump there, but we had, um, had a little glitch. I'll just... Um... Right, this is the um, command window. And from the command window, I don't, I don't know much about the command line stuff yet. I need to read some more, um, but I do know this one, basic. So it gives us um, ARM BBC basic. So works like other basics. Oops. Different keyboard region. Sorry. Ah, my mistake. Because commands have to be in uppercase. And we can put in a program. And run it. idea what the break character is. <laughs> ah, escape. Right, that's right. Uh, trouble of me remembering so many systems. So there we go. There is a quick overview, hopefully not too boring, of the Acorn A7000, the last in the Acorn line. Um, but it's not the last thing to design on the process. Of course, probably the phone that you're using, the smartphone that you're using nowadays, is based off a processor descendant of the one in this machine. Um, especially the very fact that this machine has the, uh, the, you know, the second chip that started to integrate the video display unit and the I.O. control unit all in the one chip which is what has allowed the um, miniaturization that allows our phones to work with pretty much a system on a chip. Alright, thank you for um, um, watching the very first in my System of a Week series. Um, I will try and, in general practice, to get these out on a weekly basis. It just depends on editing and everything. Um, and, oh yes, it's got a very nice screensaver too. Um, and um, uh, I will jump around in the computers. I won't stick with the same brand or anything like that. I'll just jump around as convenient and um, slowly work my way through my machines. Um, let us know if anybody wants any more detail on any of the machines as I go. Alright, thank you for watching and I'll catch you all next time.